hi everyone this is the fourth video of chapter human health and diseases here my discussions are purely based on ncrt so it is very useful for your all competitive examinations okay let's start dear students today we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic called immunity yes immunity i can say immunity is a god blessed power of our body because there are so many pathogens in environment lot of the pathogens are entering to our body even though they are disease causing organisms we don't get the disease because we have a power to fight with those pathogens so that is what is called immunity so let's have a look on immunity today yes the first and foremost is first and foremost is what is immunity what is immunity we can define immunity in a simplified fashion like this just now i told you this immunity is a ability of the body to fight with pathogens ability of the body fight with pathogens we can we can say also like this it is defense mechanism of body defense mechanism of body so as all of you know our nation is protected by soldiers army that means defense similarly our body is protected by humanity therefore it is a defense mechanism of body this is responsible for stay healthy if this immunity fails then we get disease yes now the branch of the biology which deals with the study of immunity is called immunology so we are discussing immunology this topic belongs to branch of the biology called immunology in simple immunology is a study of immunity or it is the study of defense mechanism of our body okay now the father of immunology father of immunology is edward jenner he was a great scientist you can see here the photograph of this scientist the father of immunology he is a edward jenner the biggest contribution of edward jenner is or the biggest contribution of edward jenner was edward jenner was discovered vaccines for smallpox vaccines for smallpox he was discovered vaccines for smallpox even the term vaccine is coined by edward jenner this word is also given by edward jenner so because of this great contribution 
to the immunology. He is considered as father of immunology. Okay. Now, now it is very simple. Types of immunity. Types of immunity. Based on genetic makeup, there are two types of immunity. Number one is number one is innate immunity. It is also called as inborn immunity. Number two is acquired immunity. It is also called adaptive immunity. So, what is innate immunity? The immunity which comes by birth is called innate immunity. The immunity develops during the lifetime. That is what is called acquired immunity. Okay? So, let us see. What is innate immunity? Innate immunity is present at the time of birth. Hence, it is called as inborn immunity. Inborn immunity. Why innate immunity is called as inborn immunity? Because innate immunity present at the time of birth. Then, you need to remember, this is a non-specific immunity. It is not specific to any pathogens. It is non-specific. So, you want two information. It is non-specific and this is present at the time of birth. So what we have got at the time of birth, that immunity is called innate immunity. Now, what is acquired immunity? Acquired immunity developed during lifetime. During lifetime. Yes, but this immunity is pathogen specific. Pathogen specific. This is the specific immunity. And one more information of this immunity is this immunity has immunological memory. If one pathogen enters to the body, this acquired immunity can be able to remember forever. That is the speciality of acquired immunity. Basically, acquired means develop. Yes. But today we will concentrate on innate immunity. If in the examination they ask, what is innate immunity? Then your answer is, you have to write, it is a specific immunity present at the time of birth. Spec sorry, it is a non-specific immunity present at the time of birth. I repeat, innate immunity is a non-specific immunity present at the time of birth. So, innate immunity we can explain by four barriers. There are four barriers. Let us see what are they. The barrier number one is physical barriers. Barrier number two is physiological barriers. Number three is cellular barriers. Barrier number four that is cytokine barriers. Dear student, there are four barriers in innate immunity. Number one, physical barriers. Number two, physiological barriers. Number three, cellular barriers. Number four, cytokine barriers. So, now I will give the examples for all these four barriers. 
you need to remember examples for all these uh, uh, all example for all those four barriers so then you come to know that how our body protect from the pathogens yes first one example for physical barrier Example for physical barriers. See, there are two examples. Number one is the skin. Skin. So you thought that skin, many times we speak, skin protect our body. So, skin has a protein called keratin. Remember, skin has protein called keratin. Keratin. So, skin is an organ of the body with the more surface area. Right? So, everywhere skin has keratin. So, due to the presence of the keratin, this skin prevents the entry of pathogen. Now, second example is mucous membrane. Okay? We have skin that will protect the entry of the pathogen, but we also do have some natural openings of the body. For example, our digestive system has two openings, mouth and anus. Respiratory system has openings called nostrils. Excretory system and reproductive system have openings. Therefore, there is a chance through these openings pathogen may enter into the body. That's why all those four systems, all those four systems, they are internally lined by plus mucous membrane. Those mucous membrane so where, where and all present, this mucous membrane present internal lining of digestive system, this mucous membrane present internal lining of respiratory system, it is present in excretory system, then it is also present in reproductive system. The system which has Systems which have natural openings to outside, internally they lined with mucous membrane. This mucous membrane secrete mucus, mucus and this mucus trap the dirt and other microbes. So that prevent the entry of the microbes into the other part of the body. Therefore, you should remember the two examples for physical barrier, skin and mucous membrane. Let us give examples for physiological barrier. We have many examples for physiological barriers. The example number one is saliva. Example number two is sweat. Example number three is gastric juice. In this gastric juice, we have hydrochloric acid that is called HCl. Then bile juice, tears, and ear wax. It is so interesting. All these secretions of body, they participate in irritability. So, you know that HCL present in the stomach because of very high concentration, because of very low pH, this HCL kill bacteria. Bacteria. So, if any pathogen entered, into the stomach, there, there is a presence of HCl to kill that bacteria. 
Now, all these examples are easy to remember. Students, where did you study all these in the previous class? We have studied all these in the previous class in human physiology. Therefore, we can remember these all are examples for physiological variants. Okay? Now, remember carefully. All these secretions, all these secretions, saliva, scent, gastric juice, bile juice, tears, ear wax, right? All these secretions, they have one enzyme. That enzyme is called lysozyme. It is very important. Lysozyme. This enzyme is antibacterial. Antibacterial. This enzyme break the wall of the bacteria and kill the bacteria. See, God has given us lysozymes in all these secretions. So that's why these are the examples for physiological balance. Now let us see examples for cellular barriers. Think, if one pathogen is trying to enter into the body, now physical barrier is failed, physiological barrier also failed. These two barriers, they cannot kill the pathogen. Then definitely that pathogen now enters into the blood. And through the blood, that pathogens enter into the different tissues of our body. Now how body kills those pathogens present in the blood and tissues? Here comes the cells. Some cells are involved. Yes, before giving the examples for cellular barriers, I would like to remind you the cells you have studied in the previous class that is what is called WBCs. You should know first the five type of WBCs. See, there are five type of WBCs. First you should know these. Then if I give example you can very easily you can understand. So first type of the WBCs are called Neutrophil. This is already you have studied. This neutrophil has a multi-lobed nucleus. Nucleus is multi-lobed. Some of the neutrophil they have three lobed nucleus. Some of the neutrophil they have four lobed nucleus. Some of the neutrophils they have five lobed nucleus. Therefore, therefore, the neutrophil is called as PMNL. That means polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Leukocytes. It is nothing but WBC. Leukocytes. Right? Inside the neutrophil, you can see many shape of many shape of nucleus. So that's why neutrophil is considered as PMNL, poly, many, marco, external structure, nucleus, N, nucleus, L, leukocytes. So example for PMNL is neutrophil. The second WBC you have studied, that is eosinophil. Eosinophil. It has bilobed nucleus. Bilobed nucleus. Third one is basophil. Basophil. 
إذا كان حسست مور يسط شيب المنتس and fourth one is this is the major things you remember this is lymphocytes lymphocytes it has a circular nucleus and last one is that is called monocyte monocytes it has a somewhat kidney shaped nucleus but before getting into the examples you should know there are five types of wbcs based on shape of nucleus number one neutrophil eosinophil basophil lymphocytes monocytes if i use these words you should know they are the wbcs with this let me give example for cellular balance see first example for cellular balance neutrophils second example is for monocytes third example is macrophage these three cells these three cells are called phagocytes phagocytes because they kill the pathogen by a process called phagocytosis i will tell you what is phagocytosis the next one is there is a special cells we have in our body that is called natural killer cells in simple we can say this is nk cells nk cells nk cells are a type of lymphocytes this is a type of lymphocytes now first we we'll see how these phagocytes kill the pathogen i am going to explain now phagocytosis phagocytosis see phago means eating cyto cyte means cells in simple this is cells eating cells eating this is the simple form here cells are eating the pathogens and digest it so they digest the pathogen and then they kill the pathogen let us see how imagine this is the blood capillary okay this is capillary blood vessels okay think that this is the tissue this is tissue now now one pathogen entered here think that this is a pathogen okay it is very heavy it is entered to the tissue now when pathogen entered to the tissue the first person come first to cells first to cells they randomly come to that place that is nothing but neutrophil neutrophil will come first so that is neutrophil think that in the blood neutrophil is coming here and this is having the multiplication this is a neutrophil now this neutrophil enter into tissue okay neutrophil enter into tissue now listen when this neutrophil is present in the blood it is called as neutrophil when it is enter to the tissue now it is called as microphage 
माइक्रो फेज माइक्रोफेज मीन्स द न्यूट्रोफिल इन द टिश्यू आफ्टर न्यूट्रोफिल स्लोली अनदर सेल्स विल कम दो सेल्स आर मोनोसाइट्स इन दैट दिस इज द मोनोसाइट राइट इट हैज ए किडनी शेप न्यूक्लियस नाउ दिस मोनोसाइट फ्रॉम द ब्लड this monocyte also enter into you think that is a monocyte this enter into the tissue now the monocyte enter to the tissue now this is called macrophage macrophage listen to me If the neutrophil present in the blood, it is called as neutrophil. If the neutrophil present in the tissue, it is called as macrophage. If the monocytes are present in the blood, it is called as monocytes. If they enter to the tissue, it is called as macrophage. Now this, these macrophage take this pathogen inside. right that take the pathogen inside and inside the inside the cells there are presence of lysosomes right if you want to see that this see here now you see this is the macrophage this is pathogen this macrophage engulf to the pathogen and now pathogen come inside the macrophage and this macrophage has lysosomes in that is the lysosomes don't confuse it is not lysozymes it is lysosomes lysosomes are packed with a lytic enzyme the breakdown enzymes now lysosomes break and release these lytic enzymes and these lytic enzymes digest this pathogen this process is called phagocytosis therefore phagocytosis is a process of engulfing the pathogen and digesting them inside the cell in this way these these three cells neutrophil monocyte and macrophages kill the pathogens now one more special type of the cells are there that is called nk cells let me tell you how nk cells are killing the pathogen so imagine this is the nk cell nk cell natural killer cells always these natural killer cells are wandering in your blood and they are wandering in the tissue also so they are always searching if they found any cells which is infected by virus suppose you think that this is a cell this cells are infected by virus now this cells are called virus infected cells right then if this nk cell find the virus infected cells these nk cell now produce the chemical called the perforin chemical called perforin perforin this chemical kill these virus infected cells along with virus because this chemical as the name indicates perforin means this chemical makes holes in the virus infected cells and destroy the virus infected cells and another thing is that sometime in our body 
there is a production of cancer cells there is a production of cancer cells cancer cells this mk cells if mk cell find any cancer cells in your body i will tell you how the cancer cell production takes place in the topic of cancer but if this mk cell find cancer cells in the body that do same mechanism immediately that mk cell produce the purpurins and make the holes in the cancer cells and destroy this cancer cells so therefore mk cells are destroying the virus infected cells and cancer cells so that this mk cell is protecting our body this is the examples for cellular barriers now the examples for the last barrier called cytokine barriers so cyto means cells okay kine means chemical here there is a production of some chemical and that chemical protect our body from the infections the example for cytokine barrier is interferon there are many examples the the best example is interferon we can write it as ifn interferons here only one example is there that is called interferons example for cytokine barriers now what is interferon so see interferon is a chemical especially it is a protein that interferes with the multiplication of virus so interferons are released in our body when there is a viral infection that interfere with the multiplication of the virus and that's why it prevent the multiplication of the virus in our body so that it protect from the further viral infections how it protects and how these interferons are released we'll see let's force here is a cell okay and think that this is the neighboring cell neighboring cell of course the cell is with the nucleus and this is the nucleus okay think that one virus this is the virus basically virus is made up of a capsid a covering of the virus is called capsid it is made up of protein and inside the virus what is there the genetic material may be dna or rna think that it has rna is the genetic material now this virus is infecting to this cell but remember entire virus is not coming inside virus inject only the genetic material rna or dna now this genetic material come inside the cell and start produce they start producing more number of genetic material more number of rna okay how this virus after coming inside they hijack our cell and they control our cell in such a way that they start to produce viral rna and they also start to produce viral proteins right there are production of more viral rna and more viral proteins now this cell is called virus infected cell virus infected cells inside this cell there is a multiplication of virus by production of rna and proteins anyhow now this cell is going to die but while dying this cell release one chemical this chemical 
released by virus infected cell is called interferon therefore interferon is released by virus infected cells now this interferon interferon bind to the receptor which is present in the neighboring cells every cells of our body has a receptor which receive the interferon i write it as r i this is the receptor for interferon which receive the uh, interferons now interferon come and bind to the receptor of the not infected cells this is to stimulate this is to stimulate production of some proteins here these proteins are called anti viral proteins inside the cell there is a production of anti viral proteins anti viral proteins see anti viral proteins are produced inside the not infected cells due to the binding of interferon to the receptors now suppose any virus any virus enter here these anti viral protein this anti viral protein degrade the genetic material of any virus and so that in these cell there is no multiplication of virus see how interesting it is so therefore interferon is a protein produced from virus infected cells and protect the non infected cells from further viral infections see right so from this from this we get a very good message very good message what is the message is that see this cell is now dying nano satru parvadana adare nanna neighbors nal irthakkanta cells galu saayibarthu this is the wonderful thing about this because by dying this release the interferon and that interferon stimulate the production of anti viral protein in the neighboring cells and this anti viral protein prevent the multiplication of the viruses in the neighboring cells therefore you need to remember only this much what is interferon interferon are the protein secreted by virus infected cells protect the non infected cells from further viral infections so this is about the cytokine balance with this we complete this video in the next video we will discuss about acquired immunity till then study with google and calm be happy